Join us in this episode as we dive into blue holes, snorkel down a mangrove river, and enjoy a beautiful beach. Hoffman's Key consists of 350 pristine and untouched acres of land and is located in the Berry Islands, Bahamas. It is well known to cruisers for the inland blue hole, beautiful beaches and reefs. We met up with some friends while we were there and enjoyed the island and the waters surrounding the anchorage. It's fresh water? Yeah. Brackish water, yeah. That's cool. It's almost the kind of thing that I, I could do it if I don't think about it. <laughs> yeah. All right, lad, I'm ready. Some good jumping. We, uh, Eric, he did a backflip. Did you do a backflip? It was a front. You did two front flips. I did a dive and a couple of jumps. And uh, there were some other people here too that were jumping with us. And it was a lot of fun. The uh, this is Hoffman's Blue Hole. This is uh, this is a. It's it's not fresh water. It's it's salt water. Maybe it's brackish, but uh, it's very clear. You know, when you see when the people jump in, you can easily see their legs and, and down. I, I'm guessing I can probably see down. 50 feet here anyways and uh, and that and the jumping part the cliff where you jump off it's I'd say it's 25 feet so it's not really high um, but it you feels def- high when you're standing up here oh yeah it feels high yeah. when you're up here but yeah, yeah it's uh, it was a good thing to do today because we just we didn't have the it was too windy to go bone fishing and uh, I think uh, it's just it's too windy to maybe go to another key so we're just holding tight at our anchorage. We love our anchorage. We're re- really close to a beach. So we're going to hang out here probably for a couple of days till the wind subsides. Mm-hmm. And there's a little trail. When you come up out of the water, there's a little limestone trail that gets you back up to the top here, which yeah. um, I did in bare feet and it was fine. But Michael had his Tevas on and 
he preferred that. So yeah, there, choose it's a what lot works better. for you. Yeah, it's a lot better with these because you know it's it's also it takes the takes the blow off your feet when you hit the water, mm. and uh, also the the walk is this, this limestone is pretty sharp down there, so it's nice mm. to have the the tevas on when you walk around. I mean, someone could throw the the flip flops down to you if that's what you had or your running shoes, but uh, mm -hmm. you could jump with running shoes. Let's go back to the beach. Yeah. Let's do that now. All right, let's do yeah, it. Yeah, let's do, go hang on at the beach. I mentioned in another video Michael's love for Jacques Cousteau, and in my wanderings online, I found an old Sea Odyssey episode, and I went down the veritable rabbit hole of Jacques Cousteau and Blue Hole research that he and his crew had done in the 1960s. These studies were done near Andros Island in the Bahamas and they concluded that caves were connected to inland blue holes by releasing dye and seeing it exit in multiple locations in the ocean. I was fascinated to make connections to the blue hole we had visited at Hoffman's Key, which, at 20 feet deep and 600 feet wide, reportedly only has oysters living in it. But I have, in fact, seen recent footage of a sea turtle swimming among tourists in this exact blue hole. The only way that turtle would get in, I'm guessing, is through a cave. So I'm thinking that Cousteau's findings are also true for this inland blue hole at Hoffman's Key. And if a sea turtle can find its way through, what else lurks at the bottom? If any of you viewers know more about blue holes and have ever been to Hoffman's Key and seen something in that blue hole other than oysters, leave me a comment in the section below and let me know about your experience. I would love to hear about it. These little excerpts were taken from the old TV show, The Undersea World of Jacques Cousteau. Merci Jacques, you are so inspiring to so many people. We were eager to see if our experiment would prove connection between these underwater caves. From the inland hall to the nearest hall offshore is about 700 feet. At this offshore hall, we had stationed a launch. It would enable us to detect, as soon as possible, any sign of emerging green dye that would prove the underground connection of the Bahama Blue Holes. After 20 minutes, our efforts are rewarded. Our experiment has established that the holes are interconnected. Soon the entire sea around us is awash with dye. We would repeat the experiment all across the reef to find out how extensive was this submerged tunnel system. We certainly enjoyed our time at Hoffman's Blue Hole. Next time we're in the area, I would definitely bring a mask and fins to explore underwater more thoroughly. It was all some of us could do. This visit just to muster up the courage to jump off the cliff. Oh, it's, yeah, it looks like a hermit crab to me. Thanks, hurt. Watch your foot. Big dog poo. You almost stepped. Is that a hermit crab? Walking along there. Later that day, we explored a beautiful mangrove river that is like a nursery to a wide range of marine life. The tide was low, and there were loads of sea turtles, but due to the low tide, they seemed extra spooky, so I was unable to film them properly.
Michael identified what he thought was a Spanish dancer just beside the dinghy. This little creature is a type of slug that feeds on sponges and swims like a flamenco dancer when it's disturbed. The shallow water and tangle of mangrove roots offer shelter to thousands of bait fish and smaller sea creatures. making some blueberry cheesecake muffins. Just add milk. Nice and easy to do on board the boat. And it's kind of idiot proof because if you just have to add milk, it's not really like even baking. And, um, and yet fresh baked stuff on board the boat is a real treat. So I probably shouldn't have thrown that away because <laughs> Those are the, the instructions. <laughs> okay, so heat the thing. So I'm going to heat the Omnia pot. And then this way. This Pour the batter into the muffin cups and let them bake for about 15 minutes. As I said before, the reason I'm sharing this recipe with you is that if you don't have an oven on board your boat, you can still have fresh baked goods while you are in remote locations. Those are the little muffins, all finished. I'm gonna turn them around because I didn't grease the inside of the Omnia pot very evenly. So some of them stuck and um, some of them have already been eaten. So I guess that's a success. Thumbs up for the blueberry muffins. And uh, next will be, I think, cornbread. Try that tomorrow. The pros and cons of living on a tiny boat like this is that there's not a lot of room to exercise through the day, but you can park so close to shore that it's easy to either swim or dinghy ride to the beach and do your daily practice, whatever that is. Join us next week for another adventure with Expedition Sea Nest. And if you enjoyed this episode, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching.